objective literature search what why where and how i thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to moderate this session literature search is always a starting point for most of the research so phd scholars and pg students will always talk about it is it that it is restricted only to post graduation or research i think it has a broader perspective it has a role to play in for a clinician it has a role to play for a academician i think probably at the end of this talk we might see the literature search as having a bigger scope and bigger usage by many of us as an academician we should know what is updated in the field so that we'll be able to talk to our students what is the recent updates and how can we practice evidence based practice and as a clinician again application of the evidence based practice and justifying my stand as a clinician also requires a literature search but most of the time we do a literature search by googling but is that all is that something more to that probably we'll be able to tell at the end of this lecture so without taking much of the time to listen from professor narsimhan swaminathan i would like to introduce professor narsimhan swaminathan i'm happy to introduce professor narsimhan swaminathan who is my colleague who works with me in ramachandra as a professor in physiotherapy and vice principal of faculty of allied health sciences and to say a few laurels he has he is the associate editor of sri ramachandra journal of health science since 2020 and he is an editorial member of four international journals and he is a peer reviewer for international journal including cochrane systemic review member of international society of physiotherapy journals and editors and he has got around 48 publications to his credit and he has got an h index of 12 and he is also a member of guidelines of international network and he has international contacts he is a visiting professor bournemouth university and adjun research associate of university of south australia expertise in cardiopulmonary physiotherapy he is now working more on covid and post covid rehabs and he has got a strong stint in evidence based practice his field of interest is physical activity promotion critical care physiotherapy physiotherapy education and quality of quality assurance his awards are cp noya oration award by ap laureate publication award by laureate publication award golden badge polish society of physiotherapy and he is pursuing his phd in the field of physiotherapy education so he will be the right person to talk about today's lecture literature review so i hand over now to professor narsimhan swaminathan for his lecture professor narsimhan swaminathan good evening sir uh, good evening nitesh and good evening participants uh, thank you uh, sir kumar sir for the wonderful introduction as sir kumar sir rightly said uh, literature search is the one which founds uh, you know foundation for your research work or even for your you know uh, i upgrading your knowledge if you are a post graduate student or a you know phd scholar or even clinicians require a uh, regular uh, literature uh, search so this session we're going to see how effectively we can make our uh, literature search as the title goes we want to see what where why and how
So I would like to acknowledge uh, my university, Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research, where I'm currently working, where I could carry out uh, many of our literature search and scoping reviews and systematic reviews. I would like to especially thank University of South Australia because that's where I learned my evidence-based skills. Uh, they provided me the, with the training and access to all the database where I could uh, improvise my evidence-based practice skills. Of course, uh, Society of Indian Physiotherapists for providing me this opportunity to share how effectively we can search the different database. The objective of today's session is simple too. That's what a what, where, how, uh, uh, and why we are going to see. Let's uh, understand the process of literature search. And we're going to see how you can effectively search an electronic uh, database, the basic first. At least you should know the basic one. That's what today's session kept as an objective. So now I just want you to reflect. How many of you had difficulty in finding literatures for your research work? How difficulty was that? Or how easy your literature search? Just pause and reflect. Probably by the end of this session, you'll have answers for your questions. So what is literature search? You know, there are various definitions. I personally like this definition by Gash because it says, it's a systematic and thorough search of all types of published literature, which includes the gray literature, in order to identify as many items as possible that are relevant to a particular topic. So that is what the definition for literature search. We need to understand here, it is a systematic. It should be systematic. Fine. Now, why we need literature search? Think of these points will be there in your mind if you think of why you need literature search. You need literature search to improve your basic knowledge because literature forms the foundation of your knowledge. Any of the topic, if you're interested, you want to improve your knowledge, you need to go for a literature search. Literature search also helps you to identify the prior research findings of the interesting, of the topic where you are interested, which you are interested. What is the prior research on the question I have? For that, I need to go for a literature search. It is also helping us to identify the gaps in the research so that you will be able to design a research in that area and you can help to strengthen the research in that area. Literature search is important to identify the need for research, especially if you are a postgraduate student or uh, you, know, you, you are into your PhD or you are into uh, you know, a research field. If you want to identify the need for the research, we need to go for thorough literature search. As uh, uh, Sir Kumar rightly pointed out, for evidence-based practice, literature search forms the base. If you want to implement evidence into practice, literature search is the key. So this is one of the important competency any professionals should have, especially when it comes to healthcare professionals, any healthcare professional should have a literature search skills, even at the graduate level. So how to conduct literature search? Now we are moving into the next question, how? You know, what is, what is research? Now, why we are seeing how to conduct a, a literature search? So it is very important to follow these steps. It's a systematic process. That's what I told you. It's a systematic process. It is not just I open the search box and I put my uh, keywords and I try to get the article. That is not literature search. The, as per the definition, what we discussed, you need to define your question first. It's a systematic process. 
So first step, you are defining the question. And then you need to identify the database. You are going to define the search strategy. You will be using mesh or medical star beddings. You will be using Boolean logic. Finally, you need to record the search results. So in today's session, we will be seeing all these steps. Starting from the first one to the last one, we would like to you know, uh, uh, dig on these uh, steps. At least you should be knowing the basic level. That's what as I told at the beginning because it's a process. Once you learn literature search, you should keep on searching so that you will be, you, you will be able to improvise your uh, skills. So these are all the steps. So first step is defining a question. So we will see one by one in detail. So defining a question. In a similar way, we follow the question for EBP. So there are various methods of formulating a question. The PICO, the first one is the one most of us are aware we are using it. Population, intervention, comparison, or control, and then outcome. We call that PICO, PICO format. And then PAO, here population, intervention, and outcome. There is no comparison. Then you can have PICOT. In PICOT, the population, intervention, we add time frame. In which particular time frame we are looking for. This step is important for literature search because this is the base for the literature search. Then you can have the variation that is called PCOT, P E O C O T. So here, instead of I, we go for exposure. The time frame is also added. So then people, spies, spider, there are various methods. But for this want of this lecture, we are focusing on P I C O, how you will be able to convert your P I C O into search strategy. So keep this in mind. There are various format of asking a clinical question. All these questions are used in different scenario. For this lecture, we will be focusing on the first one, P I C O. So for example, suppose you as a postgraduate student or a clinical therapist, whoever it is, you want to see what is the effect of shockwave therapy for pain reduction in uh, tennis elbow when compared to our routine ultrasound? You know, I take this scenario. This shockwave therapy is now getting, uh, uh, you know, uh, used and the literatures are getting over there. Uh, you know, uh, how this started, if you want to look for uh, the effect of shockwave therapy, you know, I'm using ultrasound. I want to compare that with the new uh, shockwave therapy. Uh, therapy. So that formulates my question. Is ultrasound more effective than shockwave? Or vice versa. You can have, but here I, I focus on ultrasound. Uh, is more effective than shockwave therapy for pain reduction in adults diagnosed with tiny cell. So there, the PICO, you divide them into PICO. That is what the PICO, the population is tiny cell. Bone. The intervention or exposure is ultrasound with which I want to compare, I want to compare with shockwave therapy, but what is the outcome? Pain reduction. This is the first step in formulating the clinical question. This will be converted into a literature uh, search, search strategy, how we will formulate based on this PICO. Next model is one, this is PIO model. So here you don't have comparison. So what is the evidence for the effectiveness of self-management of diabetes mellitus 2? So here only the intervention, there is no comparison. The population is diabetes mellitus type 2, intervention is self-management, outcome is what is the effectiveness. So that is next model. The other model is context, P-I-C-O. You know, I, I, we use this uh, recently, you know, when now we are performing a uh, scoping review. Uh, so for that, we use this model. So what we want, we want to see the experience of our uh, uh, therapist, physiotherapist, those who are working in a uh, COVID care center. So this is what we, you know, our, our context is becoming a COVID care center here. Our interest is experience of 
healthcare professionals, especially the uh, physiotherapist in COVID care center. So that is how your clinical question changes. So again, for the want of this le lecture, we will focus on this, how we will convert this into a search strategy. So first step, you follow up, you formulate a question, P-I-C-O. In the second step, what we do, we divide this question into concepts. So we know P-I-C-O, our P is tennis elbow, our uh, I is intervention, our uh, C is shockwave therapy, O is pain. So what I should do now, for tennis elbow, what are all the other words possible? It could be called as lateral epicondylitis, it is lateral epicondylgia, uh, you know, uh, tendinopathy, add all those words into the box. For one concept, we have different words. So that is important. Formulate it. You should use a, uh, I, I, ideally we use a, uh, pa a paper and we write it in that. We use a format, a form, we type it in that. So tennis elbow, different concepts. Similarly, for ultrasound therapy, different concepts. It could be identified as ultra therapeutic ultrasound or ultrasonic therapy, ultrasound massage, keep adding whatever the concepts. So we didn't go to the database still, we are in the, far, uh, in the uh, step of identifying the concepts. Similarly for shockwave therapy, it could be referred as extracorporeal shockwave therapy, ES, ECSWT, put all the possible names, the synonyms, what it could be uh, uh, identified, put it everything on the concept. Next is pain. It could be, you know, it could be a musculoskeletal pain, or it could be a tendon pain, or it could be a inflammatory pain. Keep adding, you know, I'm just, I just gave you an example. Keep this in mind. First step, we formulated the PICO. Then the next step, we are dividing the PICO into the concepts. This is very important. If you follow this, again, as per the definition, it's a systematic uh, process. If we follow the steps, what's going to happen? It makes our literature search very effective. Fine. So next step, database. So where to search? Now we know what is literature search. You know, we understood why we need literature search. We are, we know how. We'll go into the how in deep detail with the demonstration. Now we need to know where to search. Google Scholar. Yes, you could search in Google Scholar. There are other databases. We'll see what are all the databases. You need to understand what is database. It's electronic database. We will be able to search the electronic collection resources. Electronically, we can search. You know, uh, those days, if, uh, you know, I, I, if I recollect during our postgraduate time, uh, we, used, we used to go to the National Medical Library with a reference and go and check all the volumes and, you know, take the articles out of that, you know, take a photocopy. But now everything is electronically available, the electronic database. These indexes are bibliographic database. They are indexing information. They index the information on a particular topic so that we will be able to search and retrieve. It will have abstracts of the article so that you will be able to identify whether you really need to go into the full text. That is index or bibliographic database. There are full text database. The full text database are the one mostly subscribed. You will get the full text in the database. So the first one is indexes. They are bibliographic database. The second are the full text database. So there you will get the full text. You need to understand these two difference. Electronic database, index or bibliographic database, where we get the abstract, the full text database, which requires a subscription, where we get the full text also. Next. There are database again, further divided into primary database, secondary database. So these are all the common primary database where we will be able to search the physiotherapy related publications, related articles, okay? Medline, MBase, MCARE, you know, before it was uh, CINAHL, uh, MCARE, 
and then you have uh, pedro you have uh, sport discus for that is for sports there are various database but these are all the database they get the primary articles published and getting indexed there that is primary database so now you see that means there are database they are multi disciplinary database we need to understand this the previous one whatever we saw these three database what you are seeing here is for biomedical sciences medical sci uh, medical biomedical sciences so there are other database which call multi disciplinary database they are scopus web of science we need to understand those what we saw the primary database the the specific database will also be there in this multi disciplinary database we should understand this because now uh, you know uh, even the faculty members we all are looking for uh, you your publication should be indexed in scopus should be indexed in web of science that's the difference what is uh, uh, pubmed and what is scopus or web of science the scopus is one of the largest bibliographic it's a multi disciplinary database it covers all you see all the aspects web of science that is also a multi disciplinary it's mainly sciences social sciences arts and humanity so that's how the primary database divided into discipline specific as well as multi disciplinary database so there are secondary databases so these secondary databases they these databases apprises these databases apprises the primary evidence and accumulate you know like your uh, uh, systematic reviews and meta analysis the cochrane library is a secondary database campbell collaboration is also a secondary database and then we have uh, nice the national institute for health and care uh, excellence nice guidelines this is also a secondary database so primary database in primary database we have discipline specific and then we have wider database which has multi disciplinary uh, articles and then you have uh, secondary database cochrane campbell collaboration nice so this is about database where you will search so for the for this lecture uh, we thought we will demonstrate how we will search in medline uh, pubmed you know at least that is the basic uh, database we all are using you should be able to search in that effectively so this is again a us national medical library of medicine we call it nl you know uh, this sometime back uh, you know a couple of months back when this slide was prepared it, it has more than 22 million reference to journals you know uh, it's it's specific to biomedical uh, sciences so 5600 journals in 40 languages are indexed here so that is what we need to search this database because this is organized and from this database we will be able to search in the other database also once the search strategy formulated here that could be translated there is also updated daily with approximately 2000 to 4000 completed reference that's the volume of uh, uh, articles are getting uh, indexed or available in medline so uh, what we will do here i i i I'll, i'll try to share uh my screen how we will search uh pubmed i'll i'll show you that and then we'll come back uh is my screen visible not yet sir yeah it's coming up now yeah it's yeah, there it's so uh what i would like to uh uh tell you see this is what uh, uh the search page you get so now at 22 million i said now you see it is 32 million uh citations that is how it it, it grows so it's a good thing to have your account here uh, create an account it's free account you know that is what one of the thing you will be able to store your uh, uh search so create an account you know it's like how you are creating your uh, 
uh, email account and other things, it's free. Uh, you can go and uh, create an account. So now we will go back to our uh, uh, example, PICO. Is therapeutic ultrasound is more effective compared to shockwave therapy in reducing pain in adults with tennis elbow. That is our PICO. So the concept P is tennis elbow, I is ultrasound, C is shockwave therapy, O is pain. So that's my PICO. So how will I search? Better the right way directly go over there. We should search concept by concept. We should not search directly what you put. So the first word, what I'm going to put, the first word is tennis elbow. Tennis elbow. So I'm searching tennis elbow. And it comes to my search box. I'm searching it. So this is tennis elbow. So when I searched tennis elbow, there are 2,321 results. Keep it this. So now I go back. See the difference. Now what I want, I want to see how this PubMed searched. I gave the word tennis elbow. If you see in the details, you will see how it was searched. It was searched as mesh terms, medical subheadings. This is what important in Medline. You know, uh, they have an organized way of classifying the terms as medical subheadings. We'll see that little uh, detail later once we finish this search. So now 2,321 hits for this. So now I'm going to the next concept. You know, see again, I want to search the medical subheadings for tennis elbow. What I can do here, tennis elbow, you see the difference between the previous word and this. I'm putting tennis elbow. At the same time, I'm using MH. If you use this in the search box in Medline, it searches the medical subheadings specifically. Search. When I search, you see the difference? 1,736. So go back. It specifically searched the medical subheadings. That is how, if I see the details, you see this, the first one. So the second one, it searched all the mesh terms only. It did not take tennis and elbow. So that is what the previous one and the second one. See the difference. So the first one, we searched tennis elbow, but it took tennis and elbow, tennis, all fields and tennis elbow. You know, it, it is used all these things. Fine. So this is how we built up our search in Puppet. So now I use the words, we call that Boolean logic. Boolean logic, keep it in mind. These three words, and or not, we will use across most of the database in combining or widening our search. So now, keep this in mind. This is our word tennis elbow. What is our I? So I'm giving I as therapeutic ultrasound because that is our intervention. So I'm searching that separately. So now we are searching this. Uh, you want to add the uh, mesh addicts directly, you can add, you know, uh, you, you can build up. That's what uh, later when you go and explore, you can see that. Now I'm adding that directly. Therapeutic uh, ultrasound search. So that searches. So now for that concept, we got 45,361 hits. Fine. So I'm going back there. Okay, so now I see, okay, no, uh, uh, what, 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 what it searched, I'm seeing the details. Again, you see the details. It goes for ultrasonic therapy, ultrasonic therapy. You see the words, you know, it, it, it goes all the uh, details. 
it is organized that's what always start your search with medline then in any other database you will be able to navigate easily if you define your search strategy clearly with medline so this is one now fun, fine again so now what it did it did all ultrasonic therapy or, or it widened my search it didn't restrict so now probably i want to restrict only to uh mesh terms so now uh, uh you know that uh, again this is how you should understand if you want to restrict your search only with a uh, uh, medical uh, subheadings so add a, a bracket mh done add search so what i get see now 12716 see the difference because i searched only medical subheadings so see the details fine ultrasonic therapy so that is how we build search fine so now our p is done i is done so now i'm going to the next concept shockwave therapy so uh, every uh, title right shockwave therapy so i am searching second so you can straight away add mh if you want medical subheading or you can search directly add search so that's shockwave shockwave therapy again you will you can you can you can go and uh, check this is what the details you can check how it searched so it widened it also searched all so usually if you are going with the medical subheading it will be more focused fine so now my next uh uh contact uh, concept is pain that is my o so i go for pain search so i search pain so that's that's what i get so now the point is now which what it comes is now i'm going to combine my search fine so now i searched separately i did search directly effect of ultrasound uh, uh, compared to shockwave therapy for tennis elbow that's not the way because it's a systematic process it should be recorded so that i follow the pattern we followed whatever you saw we followed the pattern so now i want this to go to my query box how i am doing add this to my query box it is there in my query box fine so now my next concept is therapeutic ultrasound uh, medical subheading what we search i take them to query box that has come you see i use the word and so i now i am combining this two we are combining this two by adding a and d and we are combining fine okay so now what is our next comparison our next sorry next concept is our shockwave therapy go there again i want this to be added with and so that is and i added with and now what is our last concept pain go back add with and search so this is what we built the search strategy you get 29 results you see comparison of ultrasound and extracorporeal therapy in lateral epicondylitis you see all the studies a comparative study of the ultrasonics and extracorporeal shape shockwave therapy that's how we should build the uh, search it is very very easy and user friendly if you understand the concept that is what uh, uh, the objective of today's session the basic concept of course you can build today what we demonstrated is the the, the fundamental how the basic one how you will this is must to know you should be knowing if you are searching the database you see now fine so you get all these articles once you are there you know even you can you can restrict you know i don't i don't want studies which is published uh, you know uh, uh, 10 years back you know i i want only the studies in the last 5 years you can restrict you see here you you all may be familiar with this now you can do this go fine i i searched but i want only in the last 5 years 
So last five years, it is 17 results. You know, this is very important for you to see the recent developments. You know, what is happening in this particular area of my interest? What happened recently? What happened? You see all this five years. If you remove, you know, now you see it is uh, 17 studies. If I remove that, again, you see the whole search, the number is more. That means, okay. Uh, yeah, it's not removed still. Fine, sorry. So you can also see if you want only meta analysis. Go there, in come only meta analysis. Meta analysis in the last five years. So you want randomized control trials? You get all randomized control trials. That's that includes meta analysis also. So you can restrict and you can change your uh, details, whatever you want. You know, again, you know, if you want only the free full text, click on that. So you'll get only the free full text. Because as I told, Puppet, it's an index, you'll have abstract. These free articles will get from Puppet Central, free PMC article. You see, you have only three PMC articles. So that is how in Puppet, <coughs> the search is built. It's a systematic way. You can also, you know, now you can also get the associated data if you are having, um, you know, all these things you will be able to get. You can custom the range from when to when you want, which year to which year, everything is possible. But the fundamental, you should understand this, how we searched. Formulate the concept first. Keep this in mind. Go back and refer. Keep searching. You see, all this history is recorded here. That's what I said, when you logged in, this automatically saved. So when you are logging in next time, you will be able to get this. You will be able to download, you will be able to share this. You can you, you, you can go inside and you, you can explore. It is very, very uh, organized, well-organized uh, thing. You know, if you see these are all the filters applied, you can clear the filter so that next time when you see the filters are not there. So that is how the basic search is carried out in Puppet. So the, uh, please, uh, uh, you know, uh, try exploring. So now we'll come back to the uh, lecture, the, some of the points you should uh, understand before I'm going to the uh, next database. Uh, yeah, so, so Medline, we saw how we search in the Medline. Again, to reiterate some of the, some of the points, uh, we, what we should keep it in mind, uh, you know, this, th these are all the secondary database, as I told you, uh, Cochrane Systematic Reviews. Uh, they have all high quality evidence that is systematic reviews and meta analysis are available. You should be searching Cochrane database also. You know, uh, you know these, uh, these as uh, within Cochrane library, we have uh, six database. The Cochrane database of uh, systematic review, we have database of abstracts of reviews of effects that's called DAR. So you get only the abstracts which review the effects. And you also have Cochrane Center uh, registered for uh, you know, control trials. You'll get all the RCTs there and the methodology register, HTA, the Health Technology Assessment Database. And then you also have NHS Economic Evaluation Database, how you know the, uh, the, uh, the economic evaluation of that, uh, the treatments and everything. Uh, health-related uh, queries will be available there. You can explore this. This, this again, a uh, uh, Cochrane database is a secondary database. So this is what the medical subheadings, what we saw there. You know, they're, they're controlled uh, uh, vocabularies. Uh, uh, it's created for National Medical Library. That's how the articles are indexed. The words, how it is indexed. So why this is? Because this provides the uniformity. You know, the, the indexing is consistent. So you will be able to get, retrieve the articles. It gives you the, you know, a scope notes. 
it helps us to prevent the concepts if you see in the details you'll see how the concepts can be uh, you know identify it is it's very useful basically there are uh, 16 uh, hierarchical categories if you go into the mesh database you'll understand that but today session we are not going into the detail because that's the uh, higher level at least you should know the basic level that's today's uh, uh, objective this mesh database is also getting updated regularly so just to i showed you how when you use uh, uh, medical uh, subheadings how the search uh, changes it becomes more focused Uh, we get the uh, articles which we are which we are really uh, interested in. That is what uh, uh, this mesh is about. So, this mesh terms because they are organized hierarchically. It's more specific terms beneath the broader term. There is a broader term anatomy, and then more specific term. For example, therapy, exercise therapy, and exercise therapy. There will be other things, strengthening exercises. Uh, uh, balance exercises, flexibility exercises, so sub categories. So it organized in such a way so that we will be able to narrow the term. We will be able to get what we are looking for. I just demonstrated for our PICO. So the first step, your PICO. So again, this is important. And or not. There are three simple words, but they are very powerful. Just now I demonstrated. They are very powerful. so when you will use and and you will use to combine if you want the both terms to be included you will use and you know the articles with both the words they should have compared both ultrasound and shockwave therapy then only you will get then you will use this ultrasound and shockwave therapy so when we will use r r is to widen we will use r only to you know it gets both if the article used any one you will be able to retrieve if you are using r either the article studied ultrasound or laser i hope you understand and will get only if the article used both ultrasound and shockwave therapy but here you will get both ultrasound or laser either the study used ultrasound or it used laser you will be able to retrieve the next one is not not is to exclude you don't want shockwave you want only ultrasound that means we will use not so these are three simple words boolean operators we call a boolean logic uh, using this you know as i told you at the beginning uh, searching it requires uh, more practice keep repeating you know Uh, what we used to suggest, you know, we used to train our postgraduate students uh, to use this for even for their journal club. The journal club should be based on this. It is not that randomly you are going and picking an article and then you are uprising. No, you should have a PICO. You should have a PIO or whatever uh, method you are using. You should run a search. You should document the search and then article for that. Uprise the paper. When you keep practicing only, you will be able to uh, get it done. So you know, that's just how we demonstrated. The other database, which uh, uh, you know, which is very useful for uh, physiotherapist, uh, you know, very simple database. What you should, many of you may be aware. Uh, please uh, explore this. This is physiotherapy evidence database. I'll just show you this also. Maybe a couple of minutes. You all may be knowing this, but still, uh, it is worth exploring. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Pedro. physiotherapy evidence database so it is maintained uh, uh, you know uh, many of the uh, professional associ uh, associations are a part of uh, pedro now they are supporting uh, pedro so oh, sorry i forgot to share just a minute i will just Uh, is the screen visible now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, that is Pedro. So uh, it's just go to Pedro dot org dot au. Very wonderful resources for physiotherapists. I tell you, you know, uh, uh, you should start exploring this. You know, you you you'll see the details. Even you'll have a tutorial there. The self, uh, uh, ex, uh, you know, the this tutorial when you see, you will be able to. Uh, 
uh, you'll be able to uh, go and 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 uh, explore this. It's beautiful, and you know you can search, you can browse, you can learn. You'll see the resources. And you'll know about Pedro. It's it's very well designed. If you go to the search, you'll see it's 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 a uh, it's physiotherapy specific. It's very physiotherapy uh, specific. Either you can search as a title, or you can you know that's what it comes to physiotherapy specific. You go to therapy. You know, uh, for example, what therapy you want. You'll see that. Okay, now I'm one. I, I'm. We are looking for ultrasound and shockwave, isn't it? So electrotherapy, heat, cold. So what problem we are looking for? We are looking for, uh, you know, pain. So which body part we are looking for? So we are looking for uh, forearm or elbow. You see that is it, it is very uh, classified in an easy way. You know, uh, which subdiscipline we are looking for? It is musculoskeletal. Uh, which topic we are looking for? It's a chronic pain probably. You know, and then which method we are looking for? We're looking for a clinical trial. You know, you can keep adding, you can keep building this. I match all terms with and, so start search. That's beautiful, uh, you know, you get to see the articles related to, you know, you, you're not using the word uh, uh, shockwave, but you get all related to, because we didn't uh, filter it. We are getting all these articles about uh, tennis, elbow, you know, the lateral epicondylitic spring. It's a wonderful source for you to look for your uh, uh, resources. As I told at the beginning, why we need literature search to improve your knowledge base. Okay, so explore this. The other thing, what you'll see this year, these uh, articles are appraised for their quality because we search for clinical trial. We get only the articles which are clinical trial, randomized control trial. They are appraised for their quality. You know, more the score, more the quality. That is what we do in the AVP, the next step. Asking a question, uh, acquiring the evidence. This is step. This is what we are today. We are seeing is acquiring. In fact, we combine both asking and acquiring. The next step will be uh, appraising. That's a, a third step in EVP. But if you see this Pedro paper, they are appraised and they are readily available for you to search. Please explore these two database. Please explore. Of course, uh, Cochrane uh, uh, database is also the one you should try. Uh, so these two databases. Uh, they will be able to provide you the necessary information which you are uh, looking for. Um, sorry, just a minute. I'll share my screen again. Yeah. So that's Pedro. So to summarize, search using the subject headings and keywords. You know that how to formulate now, P I C O. From there, get the subject headings. Always search one database at a time. That's important. Don't search all the database. Search one database, and then if you have access to the other database, keep searching. It is advisable. Build your search master search in Medline. I showed you how because of the medical subheadings. Then we will be able to take you to the next one. Search one concept at a time. Don't combine at the beginning itself. Search one concept. The search strategy should be comprehensive, what we got today. It should be transparent, replicable, and unbiased. Because somebody else search, they should be also able to get the same search results in what you are getting. That is a reliable one. It should be uh, uh, you know, uh, replicable. There should not be any bias in literature search. That's the way we uh, search. So review your master search. First step, translate your question into search terms. We had tennis elbow, ultrasound, shockwave therapy, pain. We had the concepts. You know, I showed you the basic one. Later, you can build upon that. And then the database identified. Search with Medline first, Pedro, and go for your if you have access, mcare and other database, mbase and other database. Check for spelling mistakes, typos, of course, automatically you get. It should be comprehensive. And then we should look for subject settings for your main concepts. That's very important. Today, we just searched in Medline, but you should be able to document that your uh, subject headings also. Run any subject heading. 
used as a keywords and then you can check and check your search combinations when to use and when to use or so this is what we search uh, we just demonstrated the basic one also so that's about the basics of uh, literature search it is effective how you could make it, your literature search uh, effectively so what where how and why we know why why we need literature search also i hope you answered the uh, all the questions what we posted uh, today at the basic level so thank you very much uh, for listening uh, if any uh, questions you can raise your hands uh, we are ready to take it up uh, once again thanks to uh, sir as uh, nidesh uh, earlier said uh, we are looking forward to welcome you all to our uh, sixth uh, national conference uh, going to be held in chennai in january 8th 9th 10th look for further announcement in sip physio dot org for further uh, details so it's going to be a scientific fiesta we are planning for a uh, uh, very uh, you know uh, high quality scientific uh, paper presentations focus symposiums and of course there will be all uh, you know what you get to meet with the uh, people and interact so so kumar sir what you any questions we can take it up now yeah uh, thank you professor nasman uh this session because there is no chat box it's only by raising hand so i'm just trying to scroll up up and down there is one question uh, wants to ask is uh, mr jagadish a uh, yeah mr jagadish a you can ask your question sir please. good evening to all good evening Hello? yeah you are able little bit louder yes, please sir i want to know how to put uh, citations sir uh for in references how to put citations in the reference up uh, see again that's a separate uh, one uh, the citations into the reference there are various uh, uh, citation managers are available you know there are a couple of uh, free uh, uh, softwares uh, what uh, we uh, use uh, we train our uh, post graduate students is uh, zotero zotero is one citation manager you can explore that uh probably uh we may have one session on that also later we are uh, planning on that zotero or mendly and then endnote so these are all the uh, software uh, reference managing system so you are you will be while searching itself you will uh, uh, uploading all your uh, search results into into these softwares and while you are writing an article you will be able to quote directly from there so probably we'll uh, you know you look for further our sessions we are also having one sessions on that reference manager uh, uh, system also is it okay yeah i think thanks for simon i think that answered the question explore uh, explore zotero mendly uh, and note zotero mendly are free uh, reference manager systems just looking in for there is is there any questions please raise your hand maybe we can take a few more questions uh, by 10 minutes no we 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 always say if there is no questions only two reasons one we understood the second one you know it went above the head no oh, i think the first one will be right as far as this session is concerned yeah there is a i in good afternoon yeah yes uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the session. It was very uh, informative session. I would like to ask this question because uh, since this is mostly related to the systematic review, and you have mentioned one of the database that can be used is Cochrane Library, but if we are if we are only including the clinical trials, how can we then incorporate the database from the Cochrane Library? Since it also it it, it only includes the systematic review. so if our focus is mainly on the clinical trials is it a good idea to search from the cochrane library as well uh see the thing is the cochrane trial registry uh, you will you will get to see the uh, uh, clinical trials also there the other way is uh, you know uh, if you go into the uh, get into the systematic reviews you will see the cross reference from there because systematic reviews are including all the clinical trials is it clear
Yes, Adi. thank you. For cross. I think uh, I'm muted now. See, is there any other questions? Yeah, uh, I think there is a question from Rajkumar Sandar Raji. Yes, Raj. Uh, Rajkumar. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Sir, I'm Rajkumar, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, uh, what is the Scopus Index? And nowadays, uh, all the BHU scholars are uh, focusing about the uh, Scopus Index the journal. Uh, there is uh, some, some number for that. So could you please uh, just a brief about that? Why nowadays the more focus on that Scopus Index for uh, those who are publishing uh, uh, research scholars like that? It is, uh, it's a good question. Everybody asks, everybody thinks for that. Now it is, it is not only now, the Scopus is a, as I uh, sh showed you the presentation, Scopus is a, a database, it's a multidisciplinary database. So the database, an electronic database where all the articles or the journals are indexed over there. The Scopus, which is a multidisciplinary, any journal which is getting indexed there, so you will be able to retrieve from the Scopus database. You know, we have a, a Scopus, we have web websites. So these two are multidisciplinary. If you see PubMed, PubMed is a focus. It is focusing on only the uh, um, biomedical sciences. So since it's a multidisciplinary, any of the journals which is indexed in there, it will be easy for people to retrieve those who are searching. You know, whatever, uh, you know, if you see, uh, the research has to be utilized. It has to be cited. If it is not indexed, if it is not in an indexed, uh, indexed journal, your research work is not getting cited. So these database are the one, if anybody searches, you know, today we saw, if, if anybody searches in PubMed, if your research is not indexed in PubMed, there is no opportunity for your paper to get cited. Are you getting? So that means your research is not utilized. It is not getting cited. So these database are the one, they are indexing the uh, journals. If our paper is in that particular journal, there is high possibility of when anybody search, they, our paper gets cited. So that's the reason now it is important. Your publication should be in any of these database, index database. Hope I answered your question. Yes, so is there any number for that one, two, three index to one, two, three something or? Uh, what do you, I, I, I'm not getting, what is that? Any Scopus indexed number is there, sir, for uh, like uh, one, two, three, or three is good, two is good, or one is good, or like that? No, 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 you know, that is, you know, that we say Q, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, you know, that is a, uh, a journal that is a uh, Shimoga ranking, we say that. If you have, you know, Q1 is is a, is, is a top journals. The citations are more. Their citation index are more. It's it okay. depends on the Q1, Q2. You know, when you publish okay. uh, in those journals, you will be able to get cited many times. Okay. Because those okay. journals are high impact factors. Okay, right. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for the nice information. Thank you. Thank you. King Madhavi, madam, has raised her hand. Sir, good evening. Good evening, madam. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask you if there is any uh, database in our country, in India? See, uh, in India now, you know, uh, the UGC CARE, it's not a database. They are, uh, uh, they are getting... Uh, uh, as per uh, this thing, now these are all the database we are uh, looking for. Uh, Narsimhan, we are not able to hear you. Uh, sir, I think Narsimhan, sir, facing some technical issue, maybe. The yeah, back. I think so. Uh, uh, maybe I can request the participants to hold down and I'll launch a poll. Yeah. You can share their feedback. Meantime, Narsimhan, sir, will be back with us. Yes, yes, sir.
uh, we request the participants to answer this poll. There is a poll button which is there in the lower, lower corner of your screen. Please open up and start answering the poll. Somebody started answering. audible sir yeah now you are audible uh, person I, I i was keep talking and <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, you know uh, there was a question about uh, indian uh, this thing isn't it medical yeah. somebody asked it uh, see there is a indexing process is there in uh, you know the government of india has initiated uh, there is a you know uh, uh, website for indexing indian medical journals maybe you could you could you could search that so that is in the process in med in med and i think uh, there is something called as indian citation index also yeah that is indian citation this is in med it's a, a, a icmr sponsored uh, uh, project you could uh, search that yeah indian citation index is the other one you could look for it can we request the other participants also to give your poll you got around 65 or 74 who is now live So someone has responded. Thank you. Sixty-six. I think uh, in between there is a query from uh, uh, Pallab Chakraborty. Uh, uh, sir, good afternoon, sir. Sir, myself Pallab Chakraborty. Sir, uh, I want to ask you about the Pedro score. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, I actually I, I want to know uh, the, about the Pedro score and uh, on which base we can uh, we can do the Pedro score on whatever. If I got an article now, how can you score that on behalf of Pedro? Is there any way? Uh, you see, the Pedro they they themselves rate. There are volunteers. They rate the paper and then once it is confirmed, it is available on the database. So the, the scale is available on the uh, Pedro uh, website, uh, Pedro site. You can download the score and then you can score the paper. You can use it for appraisal. I hope for the answer. Uh, have you uh, tried that? If you try, if you try that, you, you will understand that because these are uh, uh, the scales which requires a, a training for you to. Uh, use the score and then you will be able to appraise the paper. Yeah, um, I hope um, it's five now. So, can we conclude the session? Yes, sir. Yeah, if any, no more questions, we can. I, I think there is no questions coming came after that. No hand raising. So we thank all the uh, participants who chose to attend. In fact, uh, the numbers were more, 
but in this platform we could have it only 100 and uh, we'll try to put it on online so we had around 400 lord participants registered and being first come first serve basis uh, uh, probably this is the lucky 100 who are there inside now till the end of this program and uh, thanks for the questions so questions are the the live part of a program so thanks for those who, are, who have asked those questions we expect more question and answers and uh, discussions in the forthcoming sessions and uh, we hope to see you all in the next sessions so i thank again the sip for organizing such programs and uh, making the uh, community more vibrant and uh, once again i welcome uh, as a part of chennai team for our sixth SIP conference in the January. So thank you, Nelson sir, for the wonderful presentation. And uh, thank you, Nitesh, sir, for uh, hosting this uh, SIP webinar. Thank over you. To, uh, over to Nitesh, sir.